Hello, and welcome to the studio. Today, we've got something different. I've never done a video like this before. We're gonna break down a cover that I played in last week's video. It's called Coffee and TV by Blur. It's all gonna be my interpretation of the song, why I chose to play the chords that I did, why the chords of the song shouldn't work, but do, <laughs> and what I find interesting about it, why I like the song, and we'll just break it all down and see what's under the covers. Swoosh. Now the first chord we have is B. And everything about that is happy. It has all the characteristics of a song that's gonna get you to go buy some ice cream, or tell you the world is fantastic, <laughs> or take you down the rainbow road to find a golden pot of leprechauns or something. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, <laughs> it's like a slap in the face and they kick you down the darkest trail of dead forest ever with like a little, like an old, bald wolf. Really creepy looking wolf. <gasps> That's what I imagine. Am I the only one? And that change is very obscure because at no point in a major key do you have a major chord going down a tone to a minor chord. You're not conditioned to hearing that, so that that first change throws everything out the window. You think you're in B to start with. So B, okay, so you know where we are. Oh, no, no idea where we are. No idea what's gonna come next. <laughs> After that, it goes to E major, which does brighten it up a little bit. Now, that change is something that's fairly common. The change from A minor to E, uh, you can label that as um, minor plagal cadence. It does push you down that kind of area. It makes you want to get to E. From E, it goes to G, which kind of works, even though it should be E minor to G. That's what would typically be in the same key. But with the addition of the G sharp there, it just adds more movement. It doesn't clash with anything really. It's, it's the melody that might make something clash with those two chords. You hear, you hear that all the time in film music. And then from G, we go to F. Now those two, they do kind of work. Like G and F, you'd assume that you're in the key of C. Um, and then after F, we've got B flat, which throws C out the window. We're no longer in C anymore. Uh, so now we're in F. And then from B flat, you go to D flat, which throws F out the window. And you have no idea where you are. It just leaves you confused. <laughs> you don't know what's coming next. You have no idea what this is all about, what the, where the center is. There's no center, there's no home. The, it's not driving you towards anywhere in particular. Even from D flat, Sorry, that was incorrect. <laughs> Even from D flat to B, there's something odd about that as well. It, it doesn't want you to get to B. D flat doesn't push you into, into, into B at all. It's kind of just smashed together randomly and that fits the theme of the song. Now let's listen to it a second and listen to how E sounds. E is the one that I think brightens it up and ties everything together. Without E, it wouldn't really feel the same. So we got. Now, what I did with these chords is I extended some of them to add some of the, the themes that I can hear throughout the song, and I added a little bit more, like, regular movement to them <laughs> to try and put some sort of structure there. So I had B, normal B major, then I went to A minor 9, to A minor, and then E add 9, to E. So both of those changes, I'm going from the ninth to the root, so. G, I played normally. F, I played the first inversion, so it was F over A. And then B flat. And then D flat. All because I want my hand to be in this position when I come back around to B again. Now that kind of confusion of the chords fits the theme of the verse. Now, 
what he's singing about is being in the same routine constantly, being very bored of it, being kind of in a busy life and having lots of people talk to you but with nothing really to say, feeling like a small cog in a big corporate wheel, like doing nothing, you know, achieving nothing, just going through the same kind of routines. And it fits those chords quite well. Do you feel like a chain store? I don't really like that lyric, by the way. It's kind of like that other song. Um, do you ever feel like a plastic bag? No. No, I don't feel like a plastic bag. <laughs> your ears are full, but you're empty. Lots of people talking, lots of noise, but no substance. Holding out your heart for people who never really care who you are. Holding out your heart for people who never really care who you are. So. It's about that kind of, it's about life at the time of this song was recorded, I suppose. I'm not sure who wrote it, I know it's by Blur. I don't know any of the background of the, of the song. It's my interpretation of it, just to let you know if anyone's in the comments. Well, this is written for this reason, no, this reason only. Now that last chord that leads into the chorus is A. It builds a lot of tension. You can add more tension by making it dominant. Which is what I did. And in theory, that would be a perfect cadence that leads into D. So you'd expect it to go. That's what you're conditioned to hear. But they couldn't go further away from it harmonically. They go to D flat. Now I know D minor to D flat minor in kind of space and measurements is very close, but harmonically, can't get further away from that. If you've ever tried to tune your guitar by pitching the note to another one, say if your guitar teacher plays a note and you've got to match it and you've got to tune yourself in by you, the closer you get to that uh, note, the more they fight, the, the worse it sounds. It sounds further away the closer you are. And then all of a sudden it'll, just, it'll come in and it'll kind of line up. It's kind of the same with this. So D minor to D flat minor, they sound completely different. <laughs> If you want to make someone feel uneasy and a little bit uncomfortable, just play minor chords a semitone apart. So they build up with A7 into D flat minor. And from here, it's got more structure. Now we're in the key of D flat minor. We've got some sort of home, some sort of root. This is where the message is important. Uh, that's the, the kind of feeling that I get. The, the way that all the instruments play together, there's certain notes and certain themes that creep in. Uh, you hear the ninth come in. The other one is they make the A a dominant seven, which shouldn't fit in the key of D flat minor, but it fits at the right time. It's at the point where they sing. Seen so much, I'm going blind and I'm brain dead virtually. That brain dead, I don't know why, I quite like that. When they when they play brain, brain dead, they play a chord that doesn't quite fit. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Greta, marry me. At this point, they go to D major. I do D major nine. So we can start over again. So D and A, that's like, you're in the key of A and you think, oh, everything's happy. Me, so we can start over and that sounds like home. A feels like the key now. But nope. It comes back to the verse again, back to B, and you're back into confusion. And that's why I love this song. Um, the message is clear even in the chords. They've kind of, um, the, yeah, that message of being a little bit lost. Coffee peps you up, it gets you ready, gives you lots of energy, gets you going, and you're watching TV. Coffee and TV. Why would you drink coffee and watch TV? <laughs> it's like you've got all the energy to do something and then you never actually do it. Um, and it's that potential that isn't getting used. It's that feeling of every day doing the same thing that you don't really want to do, you feel the same as everyone else. And at the end of this song, I wanted to do a different kind of outro. I like this sleepy jazzy stuff. So I, I instead of at the last chorus going, Me. instead of going to D, I went to the A flat 7 sharp 5 chord and I felt like that made it a little bit more dark and a bit more meaningful it wasn't as happy I didn't want it to be happy at the end really so take me away from this big bad world and agree to marry me so we can start over again I made that A major 
major seven, and then that made it easy to lead into B, and then you repeat again. But I sang, uh, if you notice the way that I picked the notes, I made sure that I could hear this note, B string, it's the fifth of, of B. Uh, that's the note that I was aiming for when it came back into here. Mm -hmm. So we can start over again. I think I was like an octave higher. So it was something like. Oh, we can start over again. I quite like that kind of sleepiness. The takeaway from this lesson is. You can use any chords you want, really. As long as there's a deeper meaning to it, you can do anything. If, if something is to make you feel confused, if a song is to make you feel confused, you can use a confusing chord sequence. Nine Inch Nails write whole albums to make you feel... <laughs> dirty. <laughs> there's an eight-hour orchestral piece by Max Richter, and the audience sleep in cots, and, and the, the orchestra plays while they sleep. And all the music is in a low frequency range, because that's what we heard when we were in the womb. <laughs> and the whole thing is designed to touch a human's deepest psyche. There's so much more to music that's possible than the 1, 5, 6, 4. If you're writing music that feels the same as the top 40 songs, you need to break out of that, you need to be yourself. That's not you talking, that's you being brainwashed by the, the corporate cluster bomb of monotony. <laughs> Don't add to that with your music. You need to be your own thing. Don't be afraid to go outside of the key. Don't be afraid to bend and break all these theory rules that you're learning on, while on your journey while learning the guitar. You need to be original and you need to stamp yourself all over everything that you do. Uh, <laughs> 